In Mutlawi, in central Tunisia, trucks 10 meters high shift tons of earth every day. It contains a precious ore, phosphate. Without phosphate, there would be no cosmetics, detergents, wine, or fertilizer. This essential ore effectively feeds the planet. The vital resource is responsible for much of Tunisia's wealth, accounting for more than 10% of the country's exports. But while the state has certainly tapped into the region's assets, it has never properly developed the land. In spite of promised benefits, the local residents have been all but forgotten. Mudlawi is situated in a dry and dusty valley on the edge of a desert. 400 miles southwest of the capital. It is Tunisia's main mining center, a dormitory town founded in the late 19th century following the discovery of phosphate by a French geologist. Salim is 42 years old. He's a miner like his father and grandfather before him. <laughs> Every day, he thanks God for his work. The ore is the region's only resource, the mine, the only way to make a living. It's time to get ready. Out in the pit, conditions are harsh. The mine is located on the other side of town. There is no public transport, the roads are riddled with potholes, and the landscape is defined by industrial infrastructure. Factories nestle among houses. Here, life revolves around ore. The deposit is owned by the Gafsa Phosphate Company, a state-sponsored corporation that reigns over the region. Nothing is done without its authorization, from the extraction of the ore to the production of fertilizers. On this site, just over 100 workers like Salim are contracted full-time. Around here, the mine is the only employer. But times have changed since the early 1980s, when the company could guarantee 100% employment in the area. Back then, it supported 15,000 jobs. Now, the figure is less than a third of that. The underground mines have closed, with all extraction now taking place in open pits. And the process is fully mechanized. Salim is a truck driver. He drives a vehicle engineered specifically for this type of quarry. The cost, several hundred thousand euros. Before leaving, he takes one last look at the machine. Salim earns 700 euros a month, excluding bonuses, three times the average wage in Tunisia. He's responsible for transporting the crude phosphate to the other side of the mine, 
where it's cleaned. The distances are short, but it's tiring work. Salim drives an average of 30 kilometers a day on tracks that are often slippery and hazardous. The result, several broken ribs, a fractured skull, and a damaged spine. But after eight months in hospital, Salim headed straight back to the mine, his job too sought after to take more time off, even if it exposes him to another daily risk, hazardous dust. To release the phosphate buried under layers of limestone, explosives are used. Whenever a new deposit is identified, the area is locked down and charges are planted in the rock, something that happens several times a week. Phosphate is the product of the petrification of the bones of fish and other marine animals. Millions of years ago, the sea covered southern Tunisia. As it retreated, it left behind this mineral treasure. These detonations can be heard for miles and are often the cause of landslides. But more dangerous still, they emit plumes of toxic dust containing uranium, chromium and fluorine that engulf the vicinity and suffocate the surrounding villages. A fine and often wet dust gets everywhere even into the workers' cabins. Nothing can stop it. It's the scourge of the miners who have no way of protecting themselves. Salim finishes work in a daze. The only sucker offered by the company, cartons of milk. Salim is able to go home, but for other workers, the day is just beginning. The quarrying never stops. For more than a century, production has been continually on the increase, with the company recording considerable profits, 500 million euros in 2010. Notwithstanding, the local people have seen none of it. In its early days, the company itself ran the local civic services. Water, electricity and education. But by the late 1980s, it had ceased all such provision and the state has never taken over responsibility. In Mutlawi, the municipal administration is running on empty and 30% of residents are out of work. The town is a casualty of industrialization and the people here are angry. Il y a, d'une façon générale, une mauvaise gouvernance. Je vais vous donner un exemple. Dans les années 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, en fait, il y a eu une coexistence entre l'opulence et la prospérité d'un côté et la misère qui s'accentue de l'autre côté. Pendant cette période, les prix du phosphate à l'échelle mondiale a grimpé d'une façon vertigineuse. Non seulement le prix du phosphate brut, mais aussi de tout ce qui est dérivé du phosphate. Donc la société d'exploitation de phosphate euh, GAFSA donc, a connu une période faste. 
C'est la période de vache grasse, comme on dit, mais qui côtoie euh, euh, un environnement misérable. Les taux de chômage les plus élevés dans le pays, ce n'est pas dans la région, c'est dans le bassin minier. In January 2008, miners took to the streets to protest the hiring practices of the phosphate company. The local people joined them, demanding social and economic initiatives for the region. An unprecedented uprising in a country ruled with an iron fist by the Ben Ali regime. The movement was to have an explosive effect. Adnan Haji was in charge of Tunisia's largest trade union at the time, the UGTT. He and his members led the revolt. It would be brutally suppressed, but the seeds of the Arab Spring had been sown. Six years and one revolution later, nothing has changed. And those paying the highest price are the so-called children of the Arab Spring. For them, the future is bleak. One in two young people are unemployed. And in addition to its dismal economic legacy, the phosphate operation is leaving another mark on the health of the region, pollution. Every day, Hundreds of tons of unrefined ore pass through these cleaning plants. Here, enormous centrifuges spin at full speed to rid the phosphate of its radioactive components, such as cadmium and uranium. Only a handful of workers are required to operate the machinery. A number of these critical turbines are worn out, and many of the filters are out of date. The plant consumes millions of cubic meters of groundwater drawn from the surrounding subsoil. And round the clock, the plant discharges heavily polluted water back into the ground. It contains the toxic residues separated from the ore.
the authorities have never sought to provide the region with appropriate water treatment facilities. Vous avez visité la région, vous avez vu des laveries en plein centre-ville. Vous avez vu euh, aussi des montagnes de déchets. Et il y a aussi des weds qui sont euh, bouchés avec une couche épaisse de déchets chimiques rejetés par les laveries et qui ont causé une dégradation euh, de tout ce qui est flore et qui était utilisé pour le pâturage dans une région où le pâturage était important. Donc euh, la pollution, elle est partout. Et sans parler un peu de son impact sur la santé. Selim visits his mother every day to bring her food and medication. Now 60 years old, she has been bedridden for several years. She is paralyzed. <laughs> Salim's mother suffers from osteoporosis, a bone disease that can be caused by the toxic phosphate particles present in the water and the air. Salim's mother receives no help from the state. The responsibility for her daily care falls to her sons. Ah, <laughs> 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 In Midlawi, her situation is not uncommon. 60% of the population suffers from problems related to pollution, such as lung cancer, silicosis, and cardiovascular diseases. The average is much higher than in the rest of the country, but the subject is taboo. The few studies that have been done have never been published. Mohammed has been a cleaning plant electrician for 32 years. He's suffering from vertigo. <laughs> Mohamed Menzia is Gafsa's official doctor. Once a year, he gives a checkup to each employee. In 12 years of practice, he has never recorded any link between his patients' illnesses and the level of pollution. Okay. 
الناس الكل تقول كانوا ثم بالفعل امراض مزمنه اكثر من المناطق الاخرى وبالاخص امراض السرطانيه للاسف الى يوم الناس هذا ما ثماش دراسه علميه صحيحه تاكد المعلومه هذه وباش تم المعلومه هذه لابد باش تكون عندنا معناها قاعده بيانات بازودوني Life expectancy in the mining area is considerably lower than in the rest of Tunisia. In phosphate country, people die young. Abdul Salem heads an environmental organization. It seeks to raise awareness of the dangers of pollution in the local community. These children, who have made a playground out of contaminated slag heaps, are most at risk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The residents here have high expectations of the new government. But for Tunis, the priorities lie elsewhere. In the mining region, there is growing discontent. And this time, the people have nothing to lose. This morning, the mine is at a standstill. Those out of work have closed off the quarry. The protest movement is spread through the region like wildfire. Now, the mines are blockaded every other day. According to Gafs's CEO, it's the responsibility of the state to meet the demands of the desperate population. La demande elle est légitime finalement de quelqu'un qui demande de l'emploi. Et ça, ce n'est pas le rôle direct de la compagnie des phosphates ou du groupe chimique. C'est plutôt les autorités locales et régionales qui doivent nous aider à ça. For the company, the financial impact has been enormous. Cumulative losses since 2011 amount to 800 million euros. In Gabez, in the east of the country, fertilizer production has all but shut down. And there is now only one convoy of ore leaving the quarry every day. Before, 
there had been six. Some major buyers have even started looking elsewhere, to Morocco and Saudi Arabia. But the Tunisian company has somehow managed to retain the majority of its clients. In failing to develop the phosphate-rich region, the Tunisian government has endangered its flagship industry. A recovery plan is expected soon. And this time, the children of the mines hope not to be forgotten. <laughs>